All right. I am here with Jeff Coyle, the co-founder and chief product officer of Market Muse. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Paul. How are you? Thanks for having me. Doing great. And Jeff is going to be presenting at the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Conference, Macon, in July with us. And so we're here to just kind of get a little preview of his session, Making Content Your Competitive Advantage, How to Ensure Every Article Delivers ROI. So Jeff, first, why don't you give us a little background on Market Muse, what you guys do, what the software enables. Oh, sure. So uh, Market Muse is a content intelligence and strategy platform really focused on accelerating, you know, content creation and identifying how to, you know, really impact the level of expertise that your the content on your site or your network of sites communicates to the world um, by being able to analyze, you know, millions of content items on demand and doing automated gap analyses um, and other um, you know, other uh, detailed uh, tech technical evaluations of content, we're able to craft high quality content plans and content briefs using our technology that inform and create a single source of truth for your editorial and content teams. So give me, I'm an SEO or I'm a content strategist. I used to do it this <laughs> way. I used to go and look for keywords. I used to try and figure out subject lines. So kind of give me a how it used to happen and how you guys kind of make it possible. Well, that's really easy for me. Um, I've been doing this for almost 20, well, actually 20 years and two days. Um, I've been in this, <laughs> in this space. And, and so how, to do, how we were doing, how, how search engine optimization professionals, how content strategists were doing it. You know, on the content strategist side, really it was trying to inform with uh, you know, manual research, uh, brainstorming, or exhibited you know, expertise of, you know, of those teams, whether it's a, a writer with the individual subject matter expertise or an editor um, who has that expertise. Um, and from a search engine optimization perspective, it was really manual keyword research, um, trying to identify uh, you know, using, unfortunately, things like search volume or pay-per-click data mm -hmm. as, your, as your North Star, as the thing you use to decide yay or nay. Um, and then the, the kind of the next phase of, of evolution in this space in, began to think about competitive analysis. Um, so what could I achieve based on some factors that I can measure? Um, and so the, the big difference that, you know, that Market Muse makes is that if we're able to provide data-driven insights for planning and for briefing um, and for editing and for in, in impacting and understanding how to tactically prioritize content creation and optimization or update efforts. Um, so by doing that, you can say, I know that if I do this, if I create this content item now, or I update these items now, they're going to be more impactful than the average. It's going to make my hit rates for content. How frequently do I publish content that is successful based on the key performance indicators that I care about? Is it traffic? Is it conversions? Is it sales? Um, so being able to use that historic authority, you being able to use the historic success rates uh, to be able to guide my next steps, a big difference than doing it manually by just looking at my keyword search volume and competition and going, I can hit this keyword. It's really focusing on subject matter expertise okay. uh, and saying, what have I covered? What am I telling the world? Where do I have gaps? Where do I have strengths that I need to take advantage of? Where do I have weaknesses? And I have to put the mirror up on my teams, uh, you know, on my site and say, yeah, we really haven't covered that all that well. We're not telling the world that we really know what we're talking about there. And, uh, and it considers the domain itself that's publishing too, because like, again, exactly. when I was coming up, we both come up the same generation here. Right. It was like, okay, the keyword volume is this and it's uh, low competition, so we'll go after it. It's like, yeah, but you get like 500 visitors a month to your site, and it's not going to matter how much good stuff you write. Yeah, that's You the guys part. actually use AI to help. Like, your domain is weak, it's strong, it's moderate, so your likelihood to actually succeed is considered. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a big differentiation for Market Muse. Um, so some other platforms are looking at um, off-page factors to evaluate your strength only. They're only able to look at, like, let's say you're the, the off-page factors like link signals, linking signals. Um, but what we're able to do is, you know, basically map out the story of your content inventory of what you've built and how does that influence in addition to all those other signals? How does that influence where you will be successful? Um, and that creates a much more 
uh, uh, high fidelity and a piece of advice for opportunity. And so if you imagine, right, if I go out and I write the best article in the world about the new iPhone on a blog that's never been, there's a brand new blog, brand new domain, good luck. It's right. gonna, I'm going to have to build out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of content items, build out a brand, you know, generate authority on, on that space to even have a chance in that field um, to build that. Um, if I have a great site and I write the same article, if I have a, a long standing site, it's going to have an easier chance of penetrating that market. So what Market Muse can do is tell you the level of difficulty in either of those scenarios. How much is it going to take to win regardless of what those scenarios are? And is it attainable? And that's the big, big difference. It's that personalized uh, lens on opportunity and difficulty. And I know you guys talk a lot about content clusters. So when we, you know, again, we came up thinking about specific keywords and keyword right. phrases. What is, what is a content cluster and, and what should people know about that approach to, you know, improving content? Yeah, the two ways to think about content clusters. Uh, one is, uh, uh, you know, semantic relatedness. Uh, so if I'm going to cover this topic comprehensively, here are the related concepts that I need to also cover comprehensively to tell the story that I'm an expert. So if I'm gonna cover content marketing strategy, I need to ensure that I have coverage of buyer journeys and target audience, or else it's actually not, it's not you know, passing muster that I actually know what I'm talking about. Um, whereas in the, in the past, it, very keyword focused or keyword crazy writers would go, content marketing strategy, and then everything I write about is gonna, content marketing strategy, this and that, Right. Not really thinking about those related topics. So that's part one of how we think about clustering. The other is intent targeting. So what are the things people wish to accomplish? What are the goals against potentially the buy cycle um, that are a fit for content? And so being able to use those and say, well, when people are researching CRM software in general, they're looking at a lot of different intent profiles. Some people are in the early stage. They just want to know what is CRM software. Right. Uh, if you're in the middle, you might, you might be looking at things like CRM software benefits or uh, advantages, or if you're deeper in the funnel, you're comparing particular products in the field or features or uh, troubleshooting, or if you're post-purchase even, you can be looking at, oh, gosh, should I change? Uh, should I change what I'm using or, or otherwise, um, or a particular error that you're looking up. So all of those things make up common intent profiles for any particular topic. So when you combine intent targets with semantically related concepts, that tells the story of what it means to be comprehensive. And so what Market Muse is trying to do is surface both of those characteristics into your planning um, and identify where you have gaps. Identify that you're really, really good at the you know, top of funnel stuff. You know, what is, you got great, so great coverage, but your middle of the funnel stuff, it's a little bit light on these topics um, and anything in between. And so by building out content plans and supporting them with content briefs uh, for Market Muse, it's, it's, kind of, it's giving you a really an unfair advantage to say, I know that if I cover this topic in this way, I'm going to have all my bases, uh, my bases lined up. Yep. That's awesome. So um, for the marketing AI conference, our goal was to find the people who actually know what they're talking about, who can make this stuff make sense to the average marketer. And the challenge we presented to people like Jeff and other technology companies is you got to, you, you know, you come tell a story, but the outcome can't be you need to buy our software to do it. So when, you know, what can people expect when they come to the conference, specifically if they come to your session, kind of actionable takeaways, regardless of whether they buy your software, somebody else's software or not, like what is the thing you're now telling people when you look out ahead and say, there's just smarter ways to do what you've traditionally done. What are the kinds of things or takeaways you expect people to get? Well, I, anytime I'm uh, communicating to an audience at a conference or an event, I'm always focused on it not being about, uh, it's about them. It's not about me. It's not about market news in this case. Um, it's really focused on if I needed to do this, how could I do it, you know, with the skills that I likely have based on the roles of the people who will be in that, the, that group. It's, yeah. the man, it's the manual efforts. It's the solutions that you could piece together um, to do these things. And, and I'm uniquely able to do that. And Paul, you know this, because I did all of this yeah. manually. I mean, the story of Market Muse is that I was doing all these things manually, all these workflows, 
and I found somebody who could automate them and had the vision of the AI from the AI perspective, because I have a computer science background, but it's in usability theory and search engine design, not artificial intelligence and data science like my co-founder. So basically I was like, here's all these crazy workflows that, uh, that content strategists need and search engine optimization professionals need. Are these, can you do this with the sec that tech, this technology? Um, and it was like, well, some of them, and then now all of them, which is wonderful. Um, and so the, um, certainly everything that I communicate um, at, at, at the event will be the, you know, what's out there and being realistic. What, what can you actually do manually um, as well as what's out there that can be helped with automation? Um, it's not a, 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 it's not a how to use, you know, how to use Watson or how to use R class. This is right. to say, don't listen to people who say that this is five years in the future because natural language processing and natural language generation and rubric generation or brief generation or gap analysis or automated content inventory, that's now. Yeah. It, it is now. And it's not just a market muse. You can build it if you wish. I mean, it, it'd be a little bit painful, but you can build it. <laughs> if you um, and the, the biggest story that I like to think about, the biggest takeaway that I would hope that a marketer has is that they will want, wish to inspire their organization to never publish content that doesn't have a chance to succeed. So if they come and like, I'm not letting anyone in my organization publish a content item that isn't equal to or better than all of my competitors from the standpoint of quality and comprehensiveness. Yeah. If I can inspire that at the end of my session, I will have won. I'm like, you don't ever want to publish low quality content ever again on your site. And if that, if that's all you take away, I'm happy. <laughs> you may need to change the title of your session to never publish content that won't succeed. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so true. And, <laughs> and, and, it, and it's, it's one of these things where um, you can, if you acknowledge and you say, I know that this is a support piece. I know that this isn't the lightning rod, but it's a, this is the foundation or the, like, that's good enough. As long as you have the right expectation, but so many teams are publishing content thinking they're going to generate traffic and then they, it, it, oh, not, and it never back and you get 10, 20 visits. And you're like, what happened? That was the best thing I ever wrote. <laughs> never had a chance. And, and, and so it's, it's realistic expectations, but also um, it's putting the real mirror in front of your face. You have low quality content on your site and um, you don't know how to find it. Um, and there isn't an easy objective way of measuring it. Um, that is something that we uniquely do. Awesome. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate your time. Let everybody know just how they can find more about Market Muse um, and maybe how to find you online. Sure. Um, well, marketmuse.com, uh, Market Muse CO is our Twitter. Um, we respond to everything. Um, I'm Jeff at marketmuse.com, uh, or you can find me, Jeff Coyle, on LinkedIn, um, and I respond to everything. Or you can come to Marketing AI Conference July in Cleveland and see Jeff in person. That is also <laughs> very true. If you miss me, I'll be really surprised. I, 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 I bounce around like, a, like a, a top that's been spun way too fast. So <laughs> you'll, you'll see me there. Thanks so All much. All right, Jeff. Well, we appreciate you being with us and we appreciate your support of the event and look forward to talking to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.